In my previous video about the weather system, I thought it was pretty meh. It wasn't really good and I thought it was underwhelming. If you remember, I used large sheets of particles and I had issues with overdraw pour. So what you do is you make the outer ring of the rain particles display a texture that contains multiple raindrops and the ones closer to the player will contain a singular texture that is a single raindrop. So as you I actually ended up removing the rain during the testing because the lag was so bad when I looked up. So my rain short is quite outdated and not really a good introduction to weather. So I spent some time redoing the weather system along with creating a whole new cloud system as well. Initially, I tried to build this cloud system as a growing grid of cells. Cells would spawn nearby cells in the direction of the wind and cells against the wind had the chance to die off. This created a pretty interesting cloudscape, but it wasn't easily manageable. I couldn't really handle transparency and I wanted a true 3D version. So obviously the next step in 3D clouds is volumetric clouds clouds like Red Dead Redemption 2 has, so I didn't do that. Instead, I spent even more time trying to refine the previous system with an entirely new axis. I messed around with different textures for cloud cells, shaders, and other things, and it never really looked good to me, so I decided I needed to try a different approach. This next approach is what I ended up sticking with. So to preface, I really wanted volumetric clouds and a sense of scale. I didn't want to use a 2D image, a skybox, or anything like that. Since more than half of the game will take place outdoors, it needed to be in the world. I needed it to affect the world and gameplay in some way, so fake clouds weren't going to work. So instead of going down the route of real volumetric clouds using a compute shader, I decided I really wanted it to work using a cell system. So I scrapped the entire growing cell aspect of the clouds. Instead, I was going to use 3D moving noise. Now, cells will spawn over a certain threshold of noise. These cells are placed in a multi-mesh instance, so the entire cloud base only takes two draw calls. Along with this, I used some better shaders that allowed the cells to use proper sorting and scaling, plus some translucency. Now, if you've used Godot's multi-meshes, you may have run into this problem, but as the amount of cells or instances in the multi-mesh grows, it gets slower and slower to do calls on those instances. Calls like set instance parameter, set instance color, things like that. So how I fixed this was I actually decided on chunking the entire cloud system up. Currently, it has 16 chunks of clouds. These chunks actually infinitely follow the player and they just update the noise based on the offset of the player. So what happens is instead of the chunks constantly updating every time the player moves, when a threshold is reached, the cloud system moves the whole thing over by the offset. This sped up calls for instance changes a ton. So once all that was settled, I finally got translucency working. But once again, I didn't really like the look of the translucent clouds. I actually ended up keeping them completely opaque and they're still like that. As you can see though, the cells of clouds change color based on the density of that cell. Cloud coverage is determined through the noise and other various parameters. Now the main reason I wanted a system like this was for the weather. The main goal I had in mind was to use the clouds as the foundation for the weather system where density and the already existing temperature and moisture maps would determine the active weather type. So the new weather system uses resource types and specific parameters to determine which weather type is over the player. Every weather update, the game checks the cloud density, moisture, and temperature around the player. After that, it is checked against weather types to find the best option. As cloud density increases, it tends to drive forth weather like rain, snow, hail. But these specific weather types are only different because of their preferred temperature and moisture. What this means is that if a rainstorm is currently happening, you can actually move towards a colder climate and watch the transition to snow. Transitions occur using the two best weather types and slowly ease towards the prioritized one. The priority happens based on the score gathered, then the score is used to ratio the amount of particles and events for that weather type. So as the weather type transitions, you'll see mixed weather. Prioritized weather also takes hold of the environmental changes. Each weather type has its own particles and some even have weather specific events like thunder and lightning. So as the main weather takes over, it modifies the environment to match the setting. If light rain is present, the weather will reflect that. If it's heavy rain, it will be denser and foggier. What's interesting about this is that there is no scale for light and heavy rain. As I said before, it uses the ratio of that weather type to modify the environment too. There's essentially a seamless transition between weather. How this works is there's a scale of 0 to 1 for a weather type. 0 means this weather is not happening, 1 means this is the only weather happening. You can sort of think of it as a 0 to 100% scalar. So what this means is as weathers transition, they only show about 40 to 50% of their usual weather amount. This also means you can get mixtures like 20% rain and 80% snow or 50-50. Anyway, here are some examples. 
any events or particles associated with the weather also follow the wind direction. And with that, we pretty much reached the end of this update. There are still some things to add, things to adjust, like fixing the updating of their cloud cells. You can kind of see how they have this blip of color right before they're updated to their actual color. But those really aren't a priority for me at the moment though. Anyways, time for another month of absence. Thank you.